What you are about to see is a remote viewing session that was done totally blind by the remote viewer. Now, I'm going to tell you what the target is so that you can follow along, but remember the remote viewer does not know this target when they're describing what the session is all about. And at the end of the session, we will tell the remote viewer what the target was so that you can actually see the response. So the target for this session is the death of Jeffrey Epstein. And we're going for the moment of death for Jeffrey Epstein. So one thing that's different about this from when we did this long ago is that with this particular targeting, we're using what we call anti-blocking techniques so that people or AIs or any type of extraterrestrial influence cannot, cannot stop us from seeing what actually happens. So this is a little different from the original project we did on Jeffrey Epstein years ago where we did not use the anti-blocking techniques. In addition, we're going after the actual moment of his death so that we can see what, how he actually died. All right, so this is the death of Jeffrey Epstein. Hi everyone, welcome to Deep News. Here we have Shantae, and uh, before we get started, Shantae, just to make sure, you do not know the nature of this target, correct? That is correct. All right, fantastic. So let's just jump in. Uh, you have some great initial descriptions and a good flash sketch over there. You got multiple structures. I'll just let you uh, let you describe it. Yeah. So first, I was seeing uh, multi-directional movement of subjects on the base surface here. I have like an urban environment with multiple surface structures, kind of rows of structures, um, and yeah, subjects on, outside on the base surface. Cool temperatures, wind type sounds, a regular topography here, and what felt like a, a focused gathering of subjects. Fascinating. All right. So uh, also you have this angled structure on your second flash sketch, this angled large structure and uh, I think is that uh, subjects that you have on the inside and the outside? Yes, I have a lot of subjects uh, in this area. It's a large, blocky, uh, maybe somewhat cylindrical, but angular structure. Yeah, I mean, you seem to have this, uh, these hard, these hard angular lines, I guess, I don't know if you would call it uh, the, the front, like one side of it looks kind of hexagonal, but yes. I'm not sure on the other side, but it just has those sort of polygon-like angles to it. Uh, that's very interesting about that structure. So uh, also you um, started to focus in on focus one and the target subject on the next page. So why don't you tell us what you started seeing there? Right, so for subject A, I had a male subject with uh, a lighter complexion, not pale, not dark skin, but a lighter complexion. And the subject had casual attire, light hues, blue hues, a middle-aged appearance, and I see short hair with kind of a mix of light and dark uh light and dark hair color and smooth skin, but also some wrinkles on the face and large eyes, but human size eyes, they're just kind of noticeably large. Hmm. Interesting. Fascinating. All right. Well, uh, that's a very interesting description right there. So do you have any, um, other pictures? I see you also moved to the subject a at the target time and started describing this physical activity. So what, what else did you get there on the next page? Yeah, so the movement I was seeing from subject A here was kind of like frantic, quick mu movement inside the subject with, I mean, inside the structure with other subjects. Mm. Uh, and the activity here just felt really chaotic and the other subjects were involved in this chaotic activity with subject A. Wow, fascinating. So uh, then you started deep mind probing subject A. What did you get there with the deep mind probe? So subject A seemed like a closed-minded subject. My deduction was maybe not super intelligent or just like average intelligent subject. Um, also was picking up some negative emotions and like rage and anger from subject A felt like a very individualistic, possibly selfish subject. 
and also felt like he was in a state of stress and just not feeling very secure and kind of a defensive subject. Fascinating. So then you moved your attention to the target event itself. So what happened when you started to probe specifically in nature to the target event? So at the target event, I was seeing destructive activity by the subjects inside the structure. There's a lot of loud sounds and shouting. These are male subjects that I was seeing uh, with this destructive activity. And in this moment, subject A kind of seemed like he was in a, a bit of a rough condition, like not in the best shape and possibly experienced some physical harm here. And there's a small group of subjects that were involved with this destructive activity with subject A. Wow. So um, then I saw you made a timeline. So why don't you describe the sequence of events across all of these probes with regards to your timeline? Okay. So first, uh, at the beginning of the timeline, I see subject A in this destructive activity. Next, I'm seeing some minor harm to subject A, but still negligible. And he has a lot of adrenaline here. And moving on a little further in time, I'm seeing more intense injury to subject A. And the other subjects in this structure are they injured. They caused this injury to subject A. Mm. And just progressively over time, subject A is in worse shape. Uh, it seems like at this current moment, it would be best if he could leave this structure, leave this area, but he can't escape. Like he's possibly trapped here or stuck here. And lastly, I see subject A not responsive. It feels like I see subject A kind of lying down and ultimately towards the end of the timeline, subject A is dead. Hmm. Interesting. So uh, I, I see you also, uh, you did a deep mind probe uh, a little bit there with the other subjects in that sort of scenario. Uh, what else did you find when you started probing the other subjects outside of the timeline, outside of the uh, subject A specifically? Yes. Yeah, so a deep mind probe of the other subjects here, they felt like they were mostly indifferent about killing subject A and causing all this harm and destruction. I did sense like a slight amount of remorse, but overall these subjects didn't really care too much. And then I ultimately, I see them leaving this area, like not staying. Hmm. Wow, fascinating. So uh, that was great, uh, fantastic session. Um, we'll go into just why it was such a good session in just a little bit. But just to be clear, you do not know the nature of this target? That is correct. Session, session was, was done, done completely, completely blind? blind? Yes. Fantastic. All right. So uh, the target that we have here was the death of Jeffrey Epstein. That was the target. So how do you feel about that? Whoa. <laughs> uh, honestly, I feel like a lot of times I don't know some of the subjects that we talk about, but I actually, when this happened, I actually did kind of try to read into it a bit more. It, so mm -hmm. that is interesting to be able to kind of see what, what was going on. Wow. So, I mean, since you read into the, the news event when it, when it happened in the news, um, you can tell that you did a really great job. I mean, it's like, it's, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Here, let me hand you the oh. let me hand you the paper for it. Yeah. So you have a you have the target subject obviously is Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, that is subject A. So the target subject Jeff, uh, Jeffrey Epstein obviously, and we have focus one, which is just the death of Jeffrey Epstein, and focusing really in on the how Jeffrey Epstein died. Uh, not just that he is dead, but just focusing in on like we had a whole timeline to actually look into the sequence of events to see exactly, okay, we had, he was here, he's going through XYZ PDQ of these time, um, chronological time moments, and then we can actually see what led to him being a dead person. And mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, he seemed to, a bunch of dudes killed him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, uh, 
that was pretty much what happened. And uh, you have a really fascinating description there. One thing that I did want to point out that I thought was really great was uh, your description of one of the major surface structures in one of your flash sketches. You had this sort of angular, polygon-shaped, uh, angular structure. And if you look at the New York, I, I don't really, really know what it's called, the Metropolitan Jail Space, mm -hmm. they have... Uh, now, it's a very blocky structure. There are right angle blockiness to it. But on one of the sides of the structure, it does have that more hexagonal looking polygon like shape that mm -hmm. you have drawn out perfectly right there. And uh, yeah, that was uh, that was great. That was really great. You have an urban area. You have subjects inside the structure and outside the structure. And you got this guy being roughed up in chaotic violent activity and dying from it so it's uh matched everyone else's sessions and it was uh, a, a really well done remote viewing session in general so it's a fantastic job thank you okay yeah i just looked up a picture of the the correctional center yeah the, one of the first pictures is with jeffrey epstein but like <laughs> yeah um oh does it say what it's called? Is it called the Metropolitan Correctional Center or something? New York, uh, NYC Metropo Metropolitan Correctional Center. That's what I typed. That's, that's what it, that's so. what it's actually called, uh, though. Let me. Metropolitan Correctional Center. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Yep. Great. All right. Well, you got it. I mean, really, you got it. That's a, that's a great drawing. That's a great description of the environment. That's a great everything. A great description of the events. A decent description of uh, the subject himself. You got this. Uh, you got this lighter skin, lighter sides of skin tones. Um, the casual attire is a to totally acceptable thing to say because he's he's not in a suit. Yeah. He's in his own prison attire, and uh, you got some wrinkles on his face, some larger eyes. I mean, human-sized eyes. You know, yeah, we're yeah. not looking at a gray or anything like that. It's a human-sized eyes, human subject, male subject, and. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Any any other questions or comments? I mean, it's a really great session. You can see a lot of verifiable stuff in there for a blind session. You know, you just getting it, getting all of this stuff completely blind. I mean, you literally you started off with what numbers? You started off with the numbers uh, two, seven, four, five, three, six, three, three. Yes. And then you came out with all of this stuff. Oh, I mean, that's I that's, so. fen that's phenomenal. That's amazing. Thank you. So, yeah, great remote viewing. Any other questions or comments? I got to stop talking so much. <laughs> no, only thing, subject A was kind of giving me like a a pathetic vibe. Oh, okay. <laughs> like a subject you, not, I don't want to say feel sorry for, but you're like, oh, not in a good situation here. But also <laughs> personality, like the deep mind probe had me like, uh oh, this is not a great subject. So you said he was closed-minded, unintelligent, closed-minded person. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I don't think anyone will argue with you about uh, any sort of jeers about this subject. I mean, he's quite universally disliked uh, now that all this stuff has come out about him. So uh, yeah. So uh, fantastic subject. I mean, fantastic uh, session, Shante, and uh, great remote viewing all around. Thank you for doing the session, and thanks everyone else for watching. Thanks.